Hello? Hello? Yes? Uh, Bob, Mr. President. Yes, Bob. I have a number of points. If you have a moment, I'd like to talk to you about sure. including the final figures on the budget. First, we sent, uh, Dean and I sent down a Marigold message to you not yeah. long ago. Yeah. Since we sent it, we've talked to Buzz Wheeler about it, and I wanted to tell you that he, it would give him no pain to do what's said in there, issuing orders in advance to stop within that area. All right, now, what would, uh, would it give you any problems, you think, before the Hawks uh, later on? No, in, sir, in, I don't in think so. In your testimony? I don't think so. We wrote this, uh, first, to try to get these things started, but secondly, in the event they don't start, and this thing all leaks, to have a reasonable position both with Hawks and Doves. Mm. Now, all right, it's okay with me. Very good. And uh, the man who would carry it out is here, and he will go back tomorrow. That's right. The, the, the fellow came over. Yeah. Okay. Uh, secondly, uh, you asked me to set up an ABM meeting, and uh, on either January 3rd or 4th, I did. I set it up for 5.30, January 4th. I've cleared that with, Walt, uh, with uh, Marvin, and I've got to everybody you asked for, the, the, uh, the Kistiakowskis and all of those people, and, and uh, I added one name whom I haven't yet called, but I'd like to call to agree with you, and that's Jim Killian. He was Eisenhower's first president science advisor. That's good. I'll do so. The others will all be there. Good. Uh, thirdly, you asked me to talk to Sarge. I guess if I, uh, I guess if I, uh, uh, I'll have to be back for that, though, on him. Yeah. Well, we can, Mr. President, if you're not here, we can set it another time. All right. Uh, they all are, are presently planning to come, and I yeah. need a few days' warning in case you don't. I have some coming from California and several from Massachusetts. Yeah. Uh, thirdly, you asked me to talk to Sarge. Uh, I did so. I, I tried to shake him from his resignation. Uh, he didn't agree to withdraw it. He did agree to reconsider. He will be in town next week on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I told him you didn't want to ask him to stay, but you hoped that he would be able to come back if you found it convenient to, at some point to talk to him. He said, well, as a matter of fact, he was planning to be away over Christmas, but he would be back on, on Tuesday and be here all week. That's good. I told him that it was your personal desire to try to raise the budget above the fiscal 67 level. You were having great difficulty with the total. You weren't sure you could do it, but you wanted to. And you'd gone so far as to ask me to try to consider ways in which, in a sense, I could cut the fence and transfer it to poverty. And that because of your interest, I was doing everything I could to, to find it, and I thought I could find a little. And that uh, uh, that you you felt that he was the one to, to push the poverty program through the Congress, and I understood it to be your hope that he would stay to do that. And that uh, you wanted to talk to him, so that's the way we left it. Good. Uh, Fourthly, what's your evaluation of it? Well, I don't know. Uh, uh, he he modified it a little bit. He said, "Well, he didn't he didn't think he had the strength to get it through, political strength to get it through. He thought it, he'd be better off with somebody else. He'd be happy to stay in the government any place he wanted, so on and so on." Well, I said, "Look, sir, that's a bunch of baloney. That the place you ought to stay is right where you are." that uh, it's absurd to talk about a Catholic nun or Carl Saunders or somebody else coming in and taking over this job at this time and getting it through. You've got the experience. You know about it. You can't bring a person in in 60 days expecting to pick up this whole program and get it through a hostile Congress. Uh, and therefore, if you walk off from this, you're just, by your action, uh, signing the death warrant to the poverty program, and this is no time to leave the president with that mess on his hands. Well, he said he didn't want to leave you with a mess on his hands, and certainly not uh, at this time. Well, I said, all right, if you don't want to do it, then you better change your resignation. Well, he said he wasn't prepared to agree to that over the telephone. I said, well, I'm not, I can understand that, but you better be prepared to agree to it next week. Well, we went back and forth. It was not an acrimonious conversation, although it may sound like one. And uh, uh, so he's, he's prepared to receive a call from you next week, Mr. President. Now, fourthly, I have the the uh, final budget figures for defense. They are very, very close to what I gave you. They're just uh, different by 
uh, roughly a hundred million dollars one way or the other. The, the new obligation authority for the 67 supplement is up a uh, hundred million above the figure I gave you. The new obligation authority for 68 is, uh, is down to 50 million. The expenditures for 67 are up 50 million. The expenditures for 68 are down 100 million. Now that's the critical figure for you, Mr. President. I think I'll give it to you again. I told you before it would be 73.2 billion. We now estimate 73.1 billion. And I told you that at 73.2 billion, if you absolutely had to have it, I could squeeze out two or three hundred million. I think I can still do it. I, I hope I don't have to, but if you absolutely have to have it, I can squeeze out two or three hundred million from the 73.1. That's one. That's one. So that's where we stand, and you can consider this final. That's and I've told our people that, and that we'll just, we've got a lot of little loose ends, so we'll but just I wouldn't tell all it. up into this, these figures. All right, I wouldn't tell anybody else, though, so we'll just have to see we get through with that. That's right. That's one. It's all subject to your decision. But from our point of view, we won't initiate changes in these. Okay. Now, what, uh, uh, give me those figures. I have them in my pocketbook, but uh, give me all right. away to 67. Let, let me give them to you all over again, then. The fiscal 60, I'll give you first new obligation authority. Fiscal 67 supplement, 12.9 billion. Fiscal 68 supplement, 74.466. Now expenditures, fiscal 67, 67,950. Fiscal 68, 73.1. Now, does this include uh, our uh, uh, anti-missile missile? It includes the anti-missile missile. It excludes the pay increase because Charlie wanted to handle that separately. Also, it excludes what I call the construction stimulus, yeah. Mr. President, which we could add into the new obligation authority very easily, <coughs> but would not need to add into the expenditures on the grounds that it was a contingency. How much you got, a billion? I could easily use a billion, and I've got all the detail already available to support that, and we can put that in, in a sense, at the last minute. Yeah, I'll talk to them about that. I think it's uh, something we would well want to consider, and the new obligation authority budget of 74.466, Mr. President, is really lower than I anticipated we could get, so I wouldn't have any hesitancy in adding the construction supplement to it if you wished. That's good, Bob. Well, it's a fine job, and hope you have a good visit and give you a sweetheart my love and gratitude. Oh, I shall, Mr. President. There's one other matter that I want to mention to you as far as my leaving is concerned. Cy Vance hasn't been able to get away with his children for a long time. He would like to be gone uh, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of next week. Now, he and I have never been away together. I'm rather reluctant to do it this time. No, no, I wouldn't do it. All, All right, right, well, we'll leave behind the Chiefs. They will be here. Buzz Wheeler will be here the whole time. And I'd watch the, if Harold Brown's going to be there, I'd go to field of him a little bit. Do what? If Harold Brown's going to be there, I'd uh, I'd uh, I'd go to feeling of him a little bit. I say if he's going to stay there, I just see uh, anything came up, you could talk to him. Yeah. Well, uh, either he or Stan Reeser will be here, and John McNaughton will be here the whole time. That's good. Okay, That's right. Mr.